Thank you for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I hope you had a great weekend. Now, I want to get to El Nino even a little more specifically than the last video. And thank you for sharing that and subscribing to this channel and taking the time to uh, do that. I was doing the hurricane forecast in the previous video if you didn't catch that. But El Nino, what you need to know about that is, well, simply put, I don't want to break it down too much. I covered a lot of it in the previous video of exactly what it is. But uh, in that cycle, things are going to be different around the globe. So different areas will be wet. Others will be dry. Some will be stormier. Some will be quieter. So let me break it down from the Caribbean and then points up to the north and what happens in an El Nino pattern. So you know what to expect as we head into the summer. I'm going to have that for you. So you get this Pacific jet and all you need to know about that is that's where the storms will be. A lot of storms kind of trekking along parts of Mexico, even over toward the Yucatan, Gulf of Mexico, Florida, uh, the uh, southwest as you get into parts of the United States. So Southern California, it's a little bit wetter through here, okay? So you have these storm systems, just storms. Uh, we're not necessarily anything tropical, but storm systems that kind of ride by here. Now, what that does to the hurricane season is that provides a lot of wind shear. So that usually means less development, less hurricanes. That part of it is a good thing. We don't need any big storms, but I know there's always a give and take with the weather. I'm thinking of our farmers out there, whatever you got going on. Of course, some of us need the water now, uh, but we nobody needs a giant hurricane, uh, of course. Uh, now, wind shear is usually something that will prevent a lot of development. So usually you don't have as many storms out there developing because the winds come across as the thunderstorms try to build up in hurricanes. The wind shear, the winds just kind of knock them off so they can't really develop a whole lot. So we'll be watching out for a lot of wind shear. But with that said, that means we're going to have slightly drier weather than average, which is not good if we've been in a drought, if you've been in a drought, and we have been in spots, been watching over toward Jamaica, even anywhere across the Caribbean. We have been too dry in many spots, and that's a saying a lot since we came off some of that historic flooding in November and December. Trinidad and Tobago, we had some of that flooding, of course. So this is the outlook. This is a typical El Nino summer. So this doesn't mean we're exactly gonna get this. I want, I want to point that out because what I'm gonna be watching is where the patterns set up because usually in an El Nino summer, we're a little bit wetter, anywhere from just Belize, we're on the borderline in South, we have a lot of showers, especially as you get over toward the Pacific side, that's where things tend to be a little more active. So in here, Costa Rica, Panama, Nicaragua, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, we're a little bit wetter, right on the edge of it in Belize. Elsewhere, we're drier. Again, we have that Pacific jet that I showed you where we're a little bit wetter in Florida, but then just to the south of that, typically we're drier because we don't have as many hurricanes developing potentially. So again, typically a little bit drier. So Jamaica, for example, again, we've been already too dry. So if this holds, this would be a big problem. I'll be watching that and usually we're drier with drought conditions, parts of Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, up through Dominica, back through the Virgin Islands, Anguilla, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Puerto Rico. But we need to see how things play out. Every year, every uh, cycle, things kind of play out a little bit differently. For example, last year we had that extreme southern uh, uh, storm track that was bringing us some of the historic flooding. So it's still a wait and see. Now this is your typical El Nino summer, but keep in mind the water temperatures are very warm, higher than average. So that could kind of balance out uh, some of the effects of El Nino and things will still develop out there. So point being, this is, a, I like to show you everything I know and everything I see. This is a typical El Nino summer, but let's wait and see where exactly those kind of smaller weather patterns set up. And I'll be, of course, breaking that down. Anything I see, trends in the weather, I let you know so we know ahead of time what we can expect as we go forward. Now, one thing, let me get back to the weather today. As expected, mid-March, more active. I was talking about that for about a month, and that did happen, and we're still seeing the effects of that even into this week with an old front right here moving by, moving by the Bahamas. You woke up to some rain in spots, northern, central 
Bahamas especially. So this is two o'clock today and you see some of the rain, a still a higher chance of rain. Turks and Caicos, North Cuba, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, and on the edge of it, the Cayman Islands and Jamaica, we're going to see spotty showers, even Haiti in the Dominican Republic. Not a lot, but we'll have a chance of a couple showers that will be around. But here's the old front. Then we get down here, Trinidad and Tobago. No, not a washout, but the rain chance around today, watching over toward Guyana for some of the showers. And then elsewhere, uh, seeing that uh, easterly breeze. So Antigua and Barbuda, for example, St. Lucia, Barbados, down through St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada. We could see a couple hit or miss showers. But again, the focus over here with that front. Now, moving forward, this is by tomorrow. Still the old front around, but things settle a touch. So the rain chance goes down slightly, but still the Bahamas, Turks, Caicos, over toward Cuba, uh, Jamaica, swinging back toward Honduras, even uh, Guatemala, especially eastern end as you get over toward the uh, Caribbean side in Belize. Better chance of some of those showers for tomorrow. ABC Islands, Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire, mainly dry as we head into our Tuesday. Let me flip it over to show you what's next on Wednesday. You see some of the old front around, and as that kind of sinks in, Puerto Rico, by the time we get into uh, Wednesday, a better chance of rain, and more in the way of spotty showers, including Martinique, Dominica, uh, Guadalupe, St. Martin, some spotty showers, not a washout, but the rain chance a little bit higher as we get into our Wednesday forecast for the Eastern Caribbean, and still the old front just falling apart, so at least there's that chance of spotty showers, Panama picking up a little bit as we head into our Wednesday time frame. So let me get into some forecasts for us. Belize today with that front around the rain chance 70% watching some areas of rain otherwise mostly cloudy skies 80 degrees or 27 degrees Celsius but an active pattern. Jamaica still generally an active pattern doesn't mean a washout uh, but we're going to see still some spotty showers around at times today for some of us. And again, as we get into tomorrow, rain chance about 50, 50, 50%, 50 87 degrees, 30 degrees Celsius. Puerto Rico wins east at 20. Now the rain chance not as high today, but as we get into the middle of the week, like I just showed you, I'll bump it up slightly, or it will bump up slightly, about a 30 to 40% chance by the middle of the week with some spotty showers just as that front nudges closer. But today's rain chance about 20%. Trinidad and Tobago also showed you some showers nearby, especially over toward Guyana. Uh, so about a 30 30% chance of an isolated shower, 29 degrees Celsius, winds east at 32 kilometers an hour uh, as we go through the afternoon. Now, hurricane season doesn't start until June 1st. March is typically extremely quiet. Of course, we're not in the hurricane season. March, though, had one name storm or one storm. It wasn't named at the time, but that was back in 1908. Now, as we get into April, sometimes things spin up in the Atlantic, usually not a big issue, but I'll be watching some signs that we're getting closer to the hurricane season. We're about two months away, so I'm starting to watch those trends and where things may eventually be uh, setting up as we get closer to the hurricane season. I'll do my best to keep you posted. Thank you for being part of this weather community. Have a great rest of your day.